Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta one has been out for almost a week at this point. I've been using it on my iPhone 14 pro max full time and also iPad OS 17 beta one on my iPad pro. And I thought we'd talk about a bunch of other new features and changes that I haven't mentioned in other videos that have been found since we'll also talk about some Apple news and the overall experience since I've been running it full time myself. And many of you have based off the YouTube community poll that I ran with over 10,000 votes, 27% of you are running the beta. This is up from just 8% that we're running iOS 16.6 beta. So many of you are already trying it out early and there's 259 comments. I've read all of those comments to sort of compile the information and see what the overall experience is like so far. Now, the first thing is some Apple news. If you're using Apple maps and you live in Paris, the new updated Apple maps are starting to roll out. That includes cycling directions as well with 3d maps. So if we zoom in here, we've got different landmarks. You've got 3d maps. You can see different information about everything here as we scroll through the city. So that's been updated. You should see that now with those cycling directions and much more. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is the developer beta is now free. Now this doesn't necessarily mean you should install the developer beta. If you're not a developer at Apple's developer website, you can see here developer.apple.com. It says choosing a membership and who should enroll. If we scroll down, you can now see that iOS or OS beta releases are now free just with your Apple ID. So that's why you may already be seeing it, but you'll want to sign up for this either way. So you can get more information, but if you need full access to comprehensive sets of development tools and much more then of course you'd want to pay for this. However, the public beta should be out in July, according to Apple. Now, as far as new features, well, the first one has to do with the control center and there was a little bit of lag there, but the sliders actually have inertial scrolling now. So if we do that with the volume slider, if you throw it up there really fast, it follows how fast you throw it. If we move it slowly, you'll see that it's sort of speeds up and then slows down compared to iOS 16.5 here. You'll see it doesn't do that. It's just sort of a static speed at all times. So no matter what you do, it doesn't just sort of slide as you let go. So that's something that we've seen with scrolling. Now we have it with different sliders within the control center. If we go into spotlight search and maybe we search for a setting such as always on display, we now have toggles directly in spotlight search. We can turn the feature off and on. And if we go out of this, you'll see that it actually stays in recent searches as well with the little switch there that's interactive. So maybe when they made all of the widgets interactive, this just translated over to this. So that's a little nice update that they've done. And I think it's very useful if you're trying to find something on your iPhone. Now, if we go into cellular, and within cellular, if we scroll down, you have apps by usage. You can now sort this by name or by usage. So it's a little sorting option that's been updated, which is really nice if you're trying to maybe limit those that have access to different data. Within settings under focus, if we go into one of our focus modes and then we scroll down to options, under options, we have silence notifications. We now have the option for always and while locked. So that's a nice little update that you can finally do while it's locked. You can silence them so it's not using your battery or anything else. It's a nice little feature update. Now on the lock screen, there's some updates as well. If we go to the lock screen, let's get rid of this notification, go into our wallpapers. And when we go into those, if we select photo shuffle, so we'll go in here and add one. And if we go into photo shuffle and maybe just use the nature photos and then tap the three dots in the bottom, right? We now have an option for depth effect. We've had this on previous wallpapers, but not with the photo shuffle option. So we have that where we can turn that on and off if you want to use that. Also, when you're customizing the time here, maybe you're changing the overall thickness of the font, you switch to something else, you make it really thick and you want it to go back to default, double tap it and it will jump back to where it was in the middle. So again, slide that double tap, it jumps back so you can start over again. There's also some new widgets as well. Now I have iOS 16.5 on the left, iOS 17 beta one on the right, and you'll see there's a new Safari widget. If we go into Safari's widget here, you'll see it's just for the reading list. We have an XL version, a regular version and a small version. Also, if we go back out and go into shortcuts, we have a new widget as well. We have a new small widget with just two shortcuts. So before we had four shortcuts and just one, now we have the option for two. Everything else seems to be the same though, as far as that goes. If you have an iPhone 14 pro or 14 pro max with the dynamic Island Shazam now will use that in the dynamic Island. So you'll see it just picks up and starts listening in the dynamic Island and keeps listening and then it will stop if it can't find anything. So it's nice to see more notifications there. Maybe we'll see more in the future as well. 
Now there's changes to the keyboard. Also, if we go into messages, specifically when we use voice dictation, the icon has been updated. So now I'm using dictation and you can see the little icon that appears when I'm using it. If I pause, it shows up again and you'll see it there. So it will continue typing as I speak. And then when I pause, the little icon shows up. If we slide over a screen here and go into shortcuts, then maybe add a shortcut here. You'll see if we add an action, we have an all new interface. It just sort of separates them a little bit differently. We can separate it by categories or apps, and it's a nice, a little better organized interface overall. Also, we have a new action in general. So if we want to reset, you'll see cellular data statistics. So that's a new one we have there as well. Now, if we go into photos, they've updated this as far as visual lookup goes. So we'll go in and within photos using visual lookup, it recognizes that this is a flower or a plant, and it actually changes the icon at the bottom to recognize that, or to tell you that if we tap on it, you'll see here, it says lookup plant. If we go to the next one, it recognizes a landmark. So these are photos I took some time ago and you'll see it says look up landmark. So now it changes based on what it's actually recognizing. So if it's a cat, it will change to a little cat or dog or whatever else it recognizes. Now, if we go into settings and again, I have 16.5 on the left, 17 on the right. If we tap on our name at the top, you can see they've updated your Apple ID settings with different icons for personal information, sign in and security, payment and shipping and subscriptions. So they've also changed the name under a few of these as well. If we go into iCloud, they've updated iCloud with a recommended for you section. If we go into that, it says recommended for you suggestions for getting the most out of iCloud. And it tells you to delete inactive backups, review your photos and videos, how much space it's using, review and delete large files, 402.7 gigabytes and more. And then there's also completed and removed things you've already changed. So if we go into that, we can then review what we've deleted and maybe recover some of it. So it's a nice little update to help us better manage storage. Also under settings, under sign in and security, we have a separate page for settings on two factor authentication. And you'll see on this page, there's more information about security keys, phone numbers that are trusted, and also get verification code. Weather gets a couple nice updates. If we go into settings and then we go to weather, under weather, you'll see under temperature unit, we have Celsius, Fahrenheit, and mirror system settings. So whatever the phone is set to, it will just use that. If we go into the weather app itself and you're in your own location using its actual location information, it now says my location at the top. So if we scroll over here, it doesn't say that on 16.5. Also, if we go into the different days here, we can now look back at our weather history by one day. You'll see here at the top, we can jump back a day and take a look at it. So that's something that's a little bit new. Now there's much more to talk about, not only with iPad OS, but watch OS and even iOS 17 still, but I thought we'd talk about overall stability and its experience. iOS 17 seems to be pretty good for most people, especially for an early beta. It's not perfect. It's an early beta. It definitely has some issues, but one good thing is banking apps are still working. That's something we haven't seen for a long time. iOS 15 to 16 banking apps didn't work toward the end until we were toward the end. Also personal voice is something I can't wait to try out, but seems to be taking forever. So under accessibility, if we go to personal voice, you'll see, it says charge iPhone to generate. This has taken me four days and seems to sort of start and then stop. So it seems like I need to actually physically plug in the phone for it to continue putting it on MagSafe doesn't seem to work or wireless Qi charging doesn't seem to work for some reason. As far as bugs, well, there's definitely still some bugs in iOS 17. First, let's take a look at the release notes in the feedback app. So we'll go in here and under iOS and iPad OS 17 release notes, there's definitely a lot of new features and things listed pages of them and known issues as well. For example, while in a call, the end call button might become inoperative force reset the device to fix this. So there's lots of different known issues. It's an early beta. We know there's going to be issues, but compared to others in the past, it seems to be pretty good. As far as bugs we know about, well, that notification bug is definitely something that's still here for some reason. We thought maybe they'd redesign notifications and they still technically could move it around a little bit in future betas, but hopefully they smooth that out overall. 
Stickers seems to be a problem. So if we go into messages, if maybe you're adding stickers, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It depends which stickers we're dealing with. So if I want to create one, that's where it doesn't seem to work for me. And it doesn't seem to work with third party apps as well. I've had some issues with calls not actually showing up that just jump right into voicemail or just not at all. And also crossfade is something many of us have been waiting for, for a long time on iOS. And if we go into music here, and if you've already tried to enable it, it will crash music every time. So hopefully with beta two, this will be resolved and we'll actually be able to use it. But once you try to enable crossfade, it will crash it every single time. Also live wallpaper is not working for me. So I showed that in a different video. So I have live wallpaper. I tried out here and it should sort of animate when I'm trying to unlock it. It doesn't do anything. And for some reason it's just not working. So hopefully they resolve that in the future. Some people have said it's working for them. I haven't been able to get it to work. Some people have said messages are not working properly. If you don't have an iPhone and you're sending them to someone else. Also one of the new accessibility features in magnifier isn't working at all. So you'll see it took a moment to turn the camera on. Sometimes when I come in here, it doesn't even work. And so the point and speak option, you'll see it says hand detected. And if I point at something, sometimes it will tell me what it is. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it doesn't recognize anything. And then it sort of gets really choppy at times, but that's okay. It's something we can wait for when it's actually complete, but it definitely is buggy from time to time. So hopefully they resolve that in the future here. Also, some people have said their notes have been getting deleted. So if you use Apple's notes app, People have said they got deleted back to a certain point. So just be aware that this is an early beta. I don't recommend it on your main device. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta one, if you have a secondary device or you have a backup and you know how to restore back to a previous version, that's fine. Otherwise you actually have to use a computer and wipe the device and then restore it in order to actually bring it back to an older version. I don't typically recommend these on your main phone. I've got it on my main phone and it's okay, but it's definitely not great. And often in previous betas, I've actually rolled back just because it was so bad. I'll see what it's like until beta two. As far as performance, performance actually seems to be pretty good. Things like ProMotion and just sort of scrolling and smoothness of animations typically seems to be quite good. Going into Spotlight, you can see it's nice and smooth and fluid with that new animation. It works really well, so that's great. Heat of the device is manageable, but it's definitely warmer than before. And as far as battery life, well, battery life is definitely not great. Most people say that's probably where the biggest issue is. That's typical for an early beta. So just keep that in mind. Battery health is down to 95% on this device. So it's got quite a few cycles now, but because this is draining the battery so fast and I'm having to cycle it more, it's using up more of the battery health. But again, 80% after two years is normal. If we take a look at battery life the other day, I used 50% of my battery, actually 75% of my battery and only had about three hours of screen active time. The day after that I had four hours and 53 minutes. So that was better, but still it's not great. Today is probably the best 50% at three hours and 17 minutes of screen active time. It definitely could get better, but it's an early beta and I expect that it's not too big of an issue to me. Connectivity of things such as AirPods seem to be pretty good. I really haven't had an issue and they seem to switch quickly like they're supposed to. So they're working well, connecting without a problem and they seem to work great. I haven't had an issue with them whatsoever, whether it's those AirPods, AirPods Pro 2 or AirPods Max. Now, as far as when to expect the next release, iOS 17 beta two will probably be a couple weeks away. And the reason I say that is last year, I went back and looked to when it actually released and I went back and looked at iOS 15 as well. Beta two of both of those versions came out on June 22nd for iOS 16 and June 24th for iOS 15. So it could be a couple weeks away and then we'll have a beta. That's actually not too bad. Usually every other week or so is pretty typical, but it could be two to three weeks away until we see beta two. That's probably around the time when we'll see iOS 17 public beta as well. Usually around beta two or beta three, they'll release it according to them in July, but they have released it a little bit early before. As far as iOS 16.6 .6 beta three, that's probably going to be this week. So I don't expect any major changes, but we know what's in iOS 17. Maybe they'll bring some nice little updates to it, but probably Tuesday or Wednesday of next week or this week, depending on when you're watching this. Now, as far as your experience, let's take a look at a few of your comments. You'll see this is in notes where I paste these comments that you've made and it's actually cutting through the dynamic Island. That's something I haven't seen before. And if I tap on it, 
it doesn't get rid of the overlay for the live text. Now you can see this is a comment from Morcoman and it says I'm using iOS 17 and it seems my notes got deleted all the way back to May 26th. I can still see them on the preview, but if I click on the note, there's nothing there. J Tech Tip said running iOS 17 beta one on iPhone 11 and it's been great. Not many issues or severe battery draining like in previous betas. Kabir Dingra says iOS 17 on my 12 pro surprised. It's been this smooth. Only small issues are the keyboard sometimes doesn't load. And sometimes when opening an iMessage chat, the chat jitters for a few seconds. Otherwise all good. Jeremy DeBose said iOS 17 on 14 pro max has been really good. The keyboard definitely is less infuriating so far. Battery life has been so, so which is to be expected. Only bad parts are a very rare lag frame rate drop turning on crossfade crashes, music settings iOS and system storage are using a combined 45 gigabytes at the moment. And I, Jeremy says running iOS 17 beta one on my iPhone 13, besides a minor bug and shortcut creation, it seems fairly good for the first beta of a major update. I'm glad that Apple has chosen to make the developer beta accessible to the public. I thought they were going to stop it with iOS 16.5. And that's everything for iOS 17 beta one, quite a big update, much bigger than we expected as far as small features and changes. And there's even more to talk about in the future. Let me know your favorite feature of iOS 17 so far in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you there. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.